Welcome everyone, in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to customize mob spawners in Minecraft Bedrock Edition. Now there are multiple methods to do this. There, You can either do it by saving a structure and a structure block or the slash structure command. Or you can control pick block the spawner. So I'm going to be showing you the control pick block method. So you place down the spawner and put the mod in it. And you just hold down control and then click the pick block button. And you'll see it says data. Now I can save and quit my world. And I can open my world in my NPT editor. Now if you don't have an NPT editor, I'll be linking a video by AminMT where he shows you how to get the old Universal Minecraft editor, which is free. And if you're on Android, you can also just use Block Topograph. Now once you have your world open in your NPT editor, you're going to go find your player. And then in your inventory, you're going to find the uh, mob spawner and go on the tag property. You'll see there's all kinds of properties in here. The first one I'm going to show you is entity scale, which is the scale of the entity in the mob spawner. The height and width only make it shrink and offset a little. They don't do much. So I'm going to show you the scale. So if I set this to something like 20, and I load up my world. and I place down the small spawner, you'll see there's a giant chicken in it. Now you can also make it smaller. So if I set to 0 0.1, and then I save it and open my world again. Now I can place down the mob spawner, and if you look very closely, there's a very tiny chicken in there. You can also set it to negative values, which look really broken because it basically turns the mouse model inside out. If I set this to negative 20, then I open up the world again. Now if I place this down, you'll see it's like upside down. Now if I put this up a little so you can see it, so it's not in the ground this, you'll see it's also inside out. It just looks really broken. Now that's it for the scale property. Now I'm going to show you the delay properties. So delay is how much longer there is until it spawns another one. This just keeps changing. I'm going to set zero. If you set to zero, then as soon as you place it down, it will spawn a mob and reset it to a value between the min and max values for the spawn delay. So if you set these both to zero, then the delay will always be zero and it will just keep spawning more chickens. So if I set these all to zero, and I open up my world, now I can place this down, and you'll see it spawns all six chickens instantly because the max nearby entities is set to six, which is the default. You only have six of the same entity type near it before it will stop spawning them. Now I'm going to show you the max nearby entities, which is what I was just talking about. So if I set this to 9,999, then I can open up my world. And now if I place it down, you'll see it just keeps spawning more and more chickens. And it will keep doing this until there's 9,999 chickens within the spawn radius of it, which is defaulted to 4. So that will probably never happen. So now if I save the world again. Now I can also set this higher. This will change how far away the chickens can spawn from it. So if I open this again. If after I set to 99. And I can place down the spawner. And you'll see they can spawn like really far away from the spawner. And some of them spawn so far away that they despawn instantly because they're outside of the simulation distance of the player. And I can save the world again. 
and spawn count is how many entities it will spawn at one time. So if I was to set this to 99, which I'd not recommend because it's kind of laggy, but if I do this, and I load up my world, now I can place this down, and you'll see it spawns the chickens really quickly. And I'm gonna save it before it gets really laggy. I'm gonna set this back down to 4. Now, required player range is how close the player has to be for it to, for the mod spawner to work. If I set this to negative 1, it, it will work no matter how far away the player is, as long as it's loaded. Now I save this, then I can boot up my world again. Now you can place this down here, and you'll see, and if I go really far away, it will just keep spawning. As long as it's loaded. If I go too far, then it will be unloaded. Unless you place it like at spawn, or in a ticking area, and then it will keep working. Even if you go really far away. Now I will show you the entity identifier property. So first, you can set this to non-mob entities like boats. Not all non-mob entities will actually spawn the entity that you put in. It will show it though, but some entities that don't have spawn eggs that you can put in there that do work include the Elder Guardian Ghost, the player, and also armor stands. So now if I just go over here and place this, you see it doesn't spawn anything, but there is a boat in it. And if I build up a giant stack of them, it turns into this. Now I can save it again. Okay. And as it's time up for the player, you can set the player. And now if I boot my world again. I can place this down. You'll see it's spawning a bunch of mobs next to it. These are actual player entities. You can see I can hit them. Now you can also set this things like an ender pearl or an eye of ender signal. And I can place this down. You'll see there's an ender pearl on it. Now, uh, the reason these are so big is because it has the scale set to 20 still. But yeah, this is what the, if you stack a bunch, then they can collide and make it, and make it look really weird like this. If you look at the Ender Pro from the top, it looks like a black hole. I can do it again, but with the Eye of Ender signal. And you boot out one more time. Now if I place this down, see there's an Eye of Ender in there. Eye of Ender signals what spawns when you use an Eye of Ender. So yeah, it's pretty similar to the Ender Pearl, except it's an Eye of Ender. Now you can also set something like an arrow. You set the skill back to one here. And I can boot my world again. Now if I place this down, and I look aside, you'll see there's a little arrow in there. Arrows are ones, ones that don't actually spawn anything. Now if you want to actually crash your friend's world, you could set it to painting. If anyone looks at a spawner that has it set to painting and they don't have a no painting crash hack on, then their game will just crash instantly. If they look in the direction of it, even if it's behind a block, as long as it gets rendered, then they will then their game will just crash. And that was it for today's video. Remember, if you liked the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe.